Hello everyone and welcome back to Stoneheart Bentonia Vale. So recently we have been making these little structures over here. That's where we're gonna put some more turrets like the ones we have on our bridge over here. So they are gonna be able to help us defending our town for the upcoming final battle in the game. So let's see if we have a couple of different turrets ready to be put on top of there. So here we have the ones we want to have there. We also do have turnip shooter, but we want to prefer the normal turrets because they also they do shoot a bit harder than uh, the turnip shooters. So we're going to be able to have two on them, so two on that one and two over on this side. And then they can help us to be a little bit more defensive during uh, the final battle because it's going to be going pretty crazy around town. It's going to be attacks everywhere pretty much. So we want to be prepared if we can be. So, we're gonna put that over there, we do need to add a little ladder so they can get up and put it. But we're also gonna look into making sure that we are making more ones. So here we have queued up to do a, quite a few more those. We have a lot of things we need to craft, we're gonna need some bronze ingots, we're gonna need some iron ingots. So it's gonna take quite a while to do all these crafting, and we only have one engineer at the moment. So Dim is our engineer for now, so he's gonna be able to do a lot of crafting. Our Blacksmith Spoils and Tyler, they're gonna be making all those beautiful ingots we're gonna need for constructing our powerful and awesome turrets. And here's a floating basket of corn over our powerful crystalline arbalest. That's kind of weird. Let's get it down from there. I'm not sure how it got over there. <laughs> Another thing I'm gonna do, I kind of like having this tree next to us here over here, but it's not gonna be good if we're gonna be fighting, right? Because it's gonna be blocking the shooting from the turrets. We're gonna remove that. Another thing I want to do is that I actually want to build what we designed over here a long, long time ago. We just never built it. So we have two houses we're going to build. This dock is going to be here right next to the boat. And I wonder if I should do maybe the dock first and then the houses after. I wonder which way is going to be the best. I think doing the houses first might be better. So let's maybe start with uh, doing this one. I see that we have uh, one little ladder we can remove. Okay, that's actually a normal ladder in the world. Okay, we don't have to remove that. We actually do have to do that. Because when you build a house, you can't have ladders where the house is gonna be. It's gonna throw some arrows at you. So let's move those beautiful ladders over here. So they're gonna be able to climb down to the... Hopefully not too cold water. And still be fairly close to it. And we can add another ladder to this side, of course. So this is not gonna help us much in the final battle, but I really would love for the Bentonian Vale to become a big and beautiful bustling town with a lot of uh, things going on, adventures, stories to be told. And it is already a pretty big town. It's probably one of my biggest towns that I have made ever. However, I do want to continue with it. Like, I would love to at least fill this area with things, like buildings. We have a clock tower planned out with that we're most likely going to be moving away because it's not sitting good there. I have even considered mining down a huge chunk of the mountain, like a really big chunk. Like maybe all these things all the way up here. Yes, so I can center the clock tower and still have a lot of empty space around it, but I'm not entirely sure if I will do that. I might just move the clock tower back to this side again. And then we can surround it with like market stalls. Maybe a little garden or something like that. Could be kind of beautiful. Because only having houses can make a town kind of boring as well. We want to have some points of interest around town, some beautiful parks and so on. We do have a few of them. We have incorporated a lot of green nature in our town and uh, I think it's pretty nice to have that. And this one we're also going to be chopping down. Unfortunately, you will have to go with Mr. Big Tree. Because we're going to replant you so we can get uh, the size we want to have. We want to stunt the trees at this size. So it won't, won't keep growing any more than that. So we're gonna get his old friend down. And we're gonna plant a new friend next to where he was before. Okay, so I think the ladder should be moved away now. Great. So let's do this house first. I think it's gonna be the best order to do it. Like this. And we have the inside kind of prepared. It's very open. Like we could, if we want to, we could add a few more rooms to divide it. That's something we could do. So let's grab the pipa tool and... Uh, we can make a little wall over here. I think this might actually be pretty good. It's, it feels a more, little bit more realistic than having full open rooms. Even though open solution is pretty common these days. I love it. But I don't think we're going to have it that open.
And then let's just color the wall a bit, see what colors kind of fit with it. And I feel like that is looking pretty good. Uh, there's some colors here that we actually don't need to have. So that's a good. We're going inside and tweak this before we finalize it. So one of the bits actually removed a little bit of floor for the upside. So maybe we could keep that, I guess. Yeah, let's just keep that. It's fine. We can even put something over there hanging down on that. Because that's another room that goes out there, right? And up here we can also split up the rooms if we want to, but up here I think I will keep it quite open. But this room will be its own with its own door over there. And let's go to this building as well before we forget about it. And let's make a beautiful little wall down here as well. And this wall doesn't have to look identical to the other house. We can do it a little bit differently if we want to. Maybe they've been renovating on their own and they decided that this is how we want our wall to look. And we have to remember also to put a door to get inside of course. Else it's gonna be kinda hard to get into the room. So door for this one, I don't wanna have to close the other door so I'm gonna have it to this side. And uh, I'm gonna do the same for this one. Because I don't want it to be too close to the door that we have from the outside over here. And later on we can add quite a few more decoration. I like the roof on this one. And this extra roof going out here is uh, really really neat, I love it. And we're probably gonna put some like fishing nets and so on on the buildings later on. And we may also want to hide a few things. It, um, a way we can do that is like if you want to be able to hide a roof over here, what we could do is to detach this, just remove that. So if I tag this now, it can also hide the stair above it. So we don't want to do that, I don't think so at least. So what we have to do then is to also remove this, like that. And now if we tag it as a roof, it goes away. And if we go back, what we could do is that um, we just grab it over here. Take the top row. Push it in like that. There we go. And that is pretty good. I might want to change a tiny tiny bit. Let's get it a little bit more random over there. And that will also be hiding what I dragged out there because it's tagged the same. And for the bottom over here, we could just add in the same color as we got on the poles. So that way we can like look under it a little bit easier. And that also made me discover that there is a missing piece of stone here. Now we can get down here and it should be pretty good. And this should be protecting from the water. We're also gonna get away the water from down here later on. We're gonna drain it out and pump it out later on. And I did have some ideas before to add pumps that we could actually pump out the water. And maybe we should play around with that idea because we have water pumps in the game. Let's actually make that. That could be fun. Let's make it a little bit special. So we would have to pump it out. I think like this level could be pretty good. We don't want to be here because that's going to flood it. Uh, but what we could do then is to over here. Let's see. Can we find gates in here? That would be great if we can. Oh, there we have it. The copper water gate. Okay, let's see. It's going away for some reason. Come on, let me click it. There we go. So first we have to make a little hole over there. So let's go with the hole tool. That's where that's going to be. Then we're going to look for the gate again. Drop it in there. So this one you can decide if it's going to be open or if it's going to be closed. So that way you can... Uh, Set if you want the fluids to go in or out, or just stay the way it is. So let's go down a few steps over here, and... Um, I wonder if I should tag this as something else. These are always kind of showing. When do they stop showing? Let's see. Okay. Probably because they are attached to the side over here. So I don't think there's too much I can really do about that. I could like tag it as a roof, but... I don't know, I feel like I want to normally see it. I guess we could tag it as a roof, maybe. But that will also change everything below there, right? As you can see. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. But here we have the water gate. And uh, if you want, we can have even another one. Uh, but I think one will be sufficient for this. 
So then we have to have a pump, and this one we will have to kind of set up a little bit later on. Uh, we want this to extend up to this one, and then we want another water pump to extend towards the gate. That way we can pump out the water from inside of this building. So if it for whatever reason would get in water inside, we can pump it out again. So like a little permanent solution. And later on we might do a dry dock. Would you guys like to see like a dry dock in town that we can fill with water? We can also remove the water from it where they will be working with chips and so on. Let me know if you guys would love to see that. So I prefer to throw in a little bit of randomness. It may look a little bit more interesting because this water is going to be removed later on. And uh, it's good that we're going down here now because it made me realize that we may want to do something over here. How does it look if we... how much space do we have here? Uh, maybe it's not so much space actually, and now that I'm looking at it. Uh, but we, what we could do, maybe before we build the building... Wonder if we maybe should dig out of this a little bit. It depends if we want to have a storage under here as well. It could be kind of good to have that. Or we will leave it as it is. Moving a lot of water is, is going to make the game lag quite a bit, so perhaps we will not do it. And it's going to be like, um, like maybe one block, let's see. I think the floor is right above there, yeah. It's only one block of there, because I think this is going to be pretty good. What we could also do if you want to make it look a little bit better would be to maybe add a little wall there. Cover up the side. I think that's going to look better. Like so. So down here we probably will have some uh, crates and so on. And uh, maybe we add it directly. From experience, I feel like I tend to forget them if I don't add them directly. So I think it's a good idea to add them pretty early on. And we can add some, for example, some barrels if you want to store some things in them as well. So just a few of them to start with at least. And later we would add some furniture on the inside of course, some beds, some candles, and so on and so forth. But I think we're pretty much ready to build this one. So deep go, that's gonna get built. And this one's gonna be a little bit simpler because we don't have any like entrance to go down under it. But we could do that if we want to. But we could do it differently. So instead of, you know, going into the water, what we could do would be to go from the land and then go down. So we we'll dig to get the down, or we can make it even more interesting, guys. Let's do that. So we do have hatches in the game, thanks to the Ace mod, that we can put on the ground. So let's see here. The door, and then we got the hatches. And then we could use... There's a really weird bug with this, like when you search it, it removes what you search for. So we're gonna add a, la a hatch over here. The thing is that I think we have to drop it on top of... Um, normal blocks. You can't put it on top of um, this that we got over here. So I think maybe if I swap out the floor. And uh, I may even be able to put it there. Let's see. Uh, I think we have to we have to do this and then we can add one inside of it. But we have to dig that out first. But we can keep the hole like that. And uh, let's see how big is this gonna be. I think it's gonna be something like Pause the game. I think I maybe made one step too far over there. Yeah, we shouldn't go all the way out. We're gonna leave like one block like that. And under here we can make it quite big. But let's take one block at a time. And we can go down maybe one more step, why not? So it's gonna be kinda deep here, so that can be nice. Store some good things down here, and maybe we can make it even deeper, because then we can have a lot of shelves like stacked on top of each other. So this will be where the ladder hatch is gonna be, and... I think we will only have like a ladder to go down with the ladder hatch. We can make a stair to the ladder hatch, we can do that as well. Maybe we'll do a staircase, that might be better, maybe. 
Okay, let's have our soldiers help with mining a few things. And let's make sure a few of them are prioritizing mining. Let's do that. Let's have them all do mining for a while. We do have quite a big troop in this town. We have four archers, we have two clerics, we have one footman, the Ogre Slayer, Jaxia, we got Jonathan, the Knight Panto, the Lord Munchi. So we have a pretty good troop over here. So now they're mining a lot. That's gonna go fairly quick, I think. We can give them a little bit of that energy boost as well. That's gonna be great. So let's see, do we have any more turrets prepared now, maybe? Yes, five more, awesome. That was really fast of them for crafting those. So let's put them over here. That's gonna be our defense but entrance of town, but I think we wanna have a couple of these spread out the inside of our town. Because the final battle will take place inside of our town, outside of our town, and pretty much everywhere. So maybe have a few turrets around to defend us if some enemies come around might be a pretty good idea. So at the farm I'm actually going to put two of these. We can have a lot of turrets, so. And I'm going to put a ladder. We might remove it later because that will remove the access for enemy soldiers to be able to go up and destroy them. And uh, yeah, we have a little tree trying to remove here. I wonder if they can remove that. I think they actually can't remove that because it's like down inside of the blocks and I don't think they can remove that from above. I could be wrong, but I don't think they can. Uh, I'm gonna leave it like this and maybe they will do it. If not, we're gonna have to use a destroy command for it. So I'm kinda looking for pumping up this water and I'm wondering if the open door of that will also make the water go through it when it opens and closes. Let's get a little ladder here. I think we can turn on hauling building again for our soldiers. Done most of the mining now, so should be working pretty good. There you go, now we can all get out, awesome. Oh wow, the game is stuttering a lot now. <laughs> it's because we're messing around with water, most likely, most likely. Look at them being productive little harpings, awesome. I'm gonna see if I can maybe um, oh, sell a couple of things. I'm also gonna spend some gold, so we don't have to waste time uh, crafting a few things. Even though this is super expensive, we're gonna save some time if you don't have to craft it. But then I also wanna see if we can sell a couple of things. We have a lot, a lot of large crates. I don't know if we need all those. I'm gonna sell them. We can actually craft some new ones, that should be pretty fast to do. But mostly the thing that gets very flooded is the herbs for me. I kinda wish I could sell the manure in town because we have so much manure over at the cow place, but we have started to clean it up quite a bit though. Fox little seeds, let's remove them. Maybe we can only keep the high quality ones. Like the high quality you have, the more likely it is that it's gonna be producing more high quality when you're gonna plant them again, so it's pretty good. Okay, we're gonna sell all of those in standard quality, and let's do the same for Frost Snap. Ooh, look at the amount of boar pellets we got, gonna sell all of those. Okay, I sold a bunch of them. I see that we have a lot of raw pork, and maybe we can see if we can make some good food with that. I'm pretty sure I recently I did the queue up to make some better food. But maybe there's some more interesting foods we can do as well, still. So we do the seasonal frost feast fruits. These are really delicious. We don't have so many fruits at the moment though. We also make some pollo nuggets. Let's see if there's something we can do that we have everything for. Hearth but ambrosia. A divine dessert. Deeply satisfying and fortifying at the same time. So this one will uh, make them heal up, but that's awesome. And that will also make them craft faster. Six very filling meals. So that's a pretty good one. Maybe we can maintain like... Let's maintain like only f two of those. Because we have to remember these can serve tw six times each, right? Maybe keep four. So that's essentially s uh, 24 servings. And sweet berry pie, that could be nice to do. That's eight meals, that's really good. 
A scrumptious pie that's very complicated to make. The crust and the berries go so well together. I would love a little bit of that, that would be awesome. With a little bit of vanilla sauce, that would be great. Let's maintain full. We're gonna have delicious things for our people. That should make them happier, right? So we had a lot of pork, glazed pork ribs. This could be nice to do. We need mayonnaise for that one. Which we should be able to get. I think it's a shepherd that do them. Um, let's put them at the top. I'm gonna try to maintain a couple of those. I think I already had them down there, I saw. But maybe putting them a little bit higher up should be good. The mayonnaise is a little bit special. Do we have to... I think we have to do something in one of the workbenches before we get there. So like over here we're doing mild cheese and over here we're doing sour cream. Didn't we need sour cream for that? I could be wrong, but I think so. Okay, we need uh, cooking oil, we need eggs, and we need vinegar. Okay, so vinegar is the missing ingredient over here. And vinegar we can make inside of a tavern. If we head over here, we are brewing some things, and... Hmm, maybe I can look through if we go into the building system. Okay, that's gonna make it a lot easier to see what's going on down here, right? So, down here we have a couple of empty wine casks, and in these we can produce the vinegar. So we can produce vinegar for unfermented wine vinegar and also from juice vinegar. So we have those two different options. I did click to do this one. What I'm gonna try to do is we continue to produce vinegar in, unless a new command is given. Okay, so let's have a look to make vine vinegar. Let's go to our brewer. Okay, here's the unfermented juice vinegar, but here we have the wine vinegar. Okay, so first we have to make wine. Okay, okay. It looks like this has a lot potentially of the same things going on in here. So we should probably remove maybe a few. So not clog up the menu too much. We have to make wine first. Those we do in here if I remember. Oh, okay, we kind of do it in the same thing. I wonder what we have most of. I would be guessing a berry wine, probably. Now it should... I think it's queued up now. Okay. Maybe we can set up another type in this one. And, and then have one to do uh, vinegar. Apple must. That should also be possible to do, because we do have apples. But that also means we have to... you have to do that as well. Don't have some in the basket at the moment, uh, but let's put the main tin for at the top. And it, it didn't sound like we're getting attacked, but I want to check a thing before we continue. I want to make sure with our apple trees that we have them on auto harvest, which we didn't have. Then we will... whenever they are ready to be collected, we are gonna collect some uh, apples from them. Which is really awesome. I think we had... yeah, here we have another one. And I wonder, did we have a few more maybe over here? There's one here. Okay, that one has harvest enabled. Awesome. But I wonder, do we have more apple trees? I, w I really wish there were like a little search box up here. That would be super handy for this game. It would help so much. Like when you get this many items, it can be really tricky to find what you're looking for. So. Good thing apple trees looks like apple, which makes it really easy to see and spot it over there, so... I'm gonna put some apple trees. And, um... For now, I'm gonna have them maybe grow. Where should I have them, actually? Maybe my apple trees will be over here for now. They're probably gonna go down later on, but we can make a new apple farm later on. Or it could be an apple farm area as well, it could be. But those are going to provide some more apples, we can make some more cider then. Ooh! And under the horde, there's a big enemy horde over here. Looks like a few of our traps are broken. They're really powerful, the traps. The turrets do kind of like... They do break sometimes, like... They stop functioning. Like, they're not dealing damage, but... Um, I think the traps uh, seem to be working still. So I'm going to have this guy. Who's this? Banto is out fighting. And here comes Alyssa Rose, who's shivering in fear, but Banto is standing here protecting everyone. He's doing pretty good being solo so far, but now he's getting a little bit of backup, so that's awesome. 
But there may be a lot more. Yeah, over here we have a few more. Oh, look at that, guys. There's quite a lot more coming down. It looks pretty cool when all of them are coming to raid your base. Welcome to Bentonian Vale. Enjoy your stay before we put an arrow to your head. <laughs> Can do a little bit of buffs as well, why not? Make them suffer a little bit with enemies. That's gonna be real hard for them. Now we're glowing with passion to fight these guys. I don't think this can be any hard for us at all. But these guys, they can be kind of tough. If you don't have like a lot of like antitoxins and so on, it can get kind of dangerous because they do deal a lot of poison damage. Especially the archers, if I remember. Looks like it's going pretty fine. Looks like it's going good. It looks like we're basically not losing any health, but also this potion that I did there. Like this one heals slowly over time, which makes it super duper powerful. So even having clairs to heal, we also have the potion to heal at the same time. Pretty awesome. And the last little undead is going down, Sam the Decaying. See Sam? Hope you had a good time visiting in Bentonian Vale. Here we go. So that's all of them cleared up. Let's get them back so they can do whatever they want to do in town again. Celebrating after the battle it seems. Pretty awesome. Okay, let's see. I wonder if we do we have all the materials we need. Seems so. Let's see if we maybe need to get a little bit more wood so we can craft the things. A hundred in wood. Okay, that's pretty good. Pretty good with stone as well. Clay is decent. Oh wow, we have a lot of weaving supplies. Maybe we should try to craft a bunch of those up so we can yeah, use it for something. Let's make a couple of beds. I just wanna make them do a few things. Let's make ten of those beds so we can sell them or do whatever we want to do later on. Uh, we can make some more stockings. Winter is coming up pretty quick, guys, like in real life. We have uh, autumn over here in Sweden, but uh, winter is getting closer and closer. And let's make some holiday share codes. Winter is getting kind of close in the game as well. Only 10 more days of autumn, actually. Thank you, Ultra Washek, for a marble wall lantern. Thank you, thank you. Ooh, a brewer, okay. Should we buy some apple must? I kind of prefer to like do it on my own, like because it's fun when you're using the things you got yourself to produce the things you want to produce instead of just buying things. It can be really useful to buy them, of course, but it's really nice when you can have a town that can survive and thrive on its own own as well, right? So let's see. Looks like we're making some apple must. That's awesome. I wonder if we should get some more. It feels like we ain't using all of these. I'm kind of thinking of um, potentially undeploy some of them. Let's make sure I put apple must in this one. Apple cider. Now sherry wine. Okay, I maybe took the wrong one before. This one I want to do. There we go. And let's make sure this one is vinegar then. Okay, that should hopefully do pretty good. But guys, this will be it for today with Stone Hearts. So um, we're getting closer and closer to the final battle. Uh, this is going to be really useful when we can have them for fighting the, at the final battle. But guys, hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, feel free to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I shall see you guys in the next one. So thanks for watching today's episode. And see you guys very, very soon again. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.